All right, guys, uh, we are going to be hopping into the next game of today's only cast your freaking awesome replays it is the corporate greed challenge where players had to get over a hundred workers this is the second game of this challenge that we're casting now keep in mind if you want to get your replays in for next week the challenge is extremely inefficient weapon that is you need to win in the most inefficient way possible maybe that involves getting up a lot of workers and then running zerglings into your opponent in the derpiest way possible for 10 minutes straight maybe it involves i don't know doing some weird shit. You guys are going to be creative. You always come up with strange, entertaining, and odd things. So show me what you got. Send in your reps as per always. I'm looking forward to casting them. Of course, these are all sponsored by Liquid Rain. Cash on the line for players who win. And oh shit, I better get to casting because I see a couple of probes coming across the map. Up here in the top right, in the red, the Zerg. It's Gaiurchin. And up here in the top left, in the blue, the Protoss. It's Bartleby. Now Bartleby's gone for a gateway but there's already two little douchebag probes coming across the map. And it makes me wonder, do they think they built a forge behind this? Because why why are there two here? And this guy already looks a little bit suspect. But uh, Guy Urchin is, is not really freaking out just yet. He's like, nah, he just wants to hang out next to my hatchery. This looks totally normal. A second probe is going to come and just stand there. Still, Gay Urchin's like, nah, it's fine, man. I don't need to respond to this. Two probes, they probably just want to hang out and have a look. Um, I did make that sound like Gay Urchin, didn't I? Guy, I fucking don't know how to say this word. I mean, nothing wrong with being a Gay Urchin. What is an Urchin anyway? Like a street Urchin is like, it's like someone who just hangs out and like, is that like the same as a beggar? What's a street? What's an urchin? Anyway, that's a fucking... I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some etymology after this game, aren't I? <laughs> Isn't an urchin a bird? Maybe, uh, apparently, I don't know. <laughs> Alright, the probe's gonna run around, put some cannons down, have a little bit of fun. Let's see what we do. And the sea urchins as well. That is true. But, but isn't there like, isn't there like street urchins as well? A mischievous young child, especially one who is poorly or raggedly dressed. Ah, so it's like a child beggar, basically. Oh, the Probius is getting damaged. Probius getting damaged. This cannon's actually going to finish, but it's going to die like a second later. That probe gets wrecked. One drone goes down. I love these two drones just having a smoker up there, not really helping out. This other cannon looks like there's a lot of drones. These two drones just stuck behind their friends. They're like, dude, move over so we can attack it. Let us at it. Let us at it. These three drones are like, nah, we're just going to let this cannon finish and kill a bunch of us. Hey. Oh, okay, only two drones going down. Pretty good hold there by Guy Urchin. Guy Urchin. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him Guy Urchin. And some German is like, it's this guy, Guy Urchin. God damn it, pig! Learn to speak our language. Sorry, guys. I uh, don't, I don't speak, I don't speak your, your Germans. Okay, it's tough. Um. I do like these pylons just kind of hanging out here. Nexus on the low ground, Zealot on the way, Gas is mining. Pretty terrible start for Bartleby. Right? I think it's kind of shitty for him. We'll see how it goes though. Guy Urchin's just kind of like, yeah, got some queens on the way, some ling speed. It's got a pretty good worker advantage already, but there is a pylon blocking the third, and this drone went over, wanted to build a third base, was looking forward to it his whole life. First time he runs into an obstacle and he goes, oh my God, I've been, you know, I, I grew up rich. I had a butler who did everything for me. I had people who did my homework for me. I never had to lift a finger. First obstacle in my life, a pylon. And now I'm just going to go hide in a corner, fucking put me head in me hands and start screeching, contemplating the void and shit. And you're like, I don't know, man. It's it's just a pylon. The Zergan's like, it's okay, buddy. Come over here. Build a hatchery. He's like, no, me fucking existence is pointless now. Ah, uh, what even is life? Amon's over here and he's like, yeah, <laughs> fucking water. Fucking contemplate your existence and get all fucking, get all like, what what even is life and shit? Just contemplate it. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm going to make you feel despair and also a loss of meaning in life. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, these Zergan's going to clear up some pylons and oh my God. Fucking Gary has to come over and do his job for him. Gary's like, you idiot. I'll build the hatchery if you won't. And he's still just going to chill there. He's just going to hang out. He's going to be like, nah, man. Fucking this shit's not even... Ah, oh, fucking don't even know what's my purpose anymore. Uh, up here, some more gateways on the way. Bartleby once again displaying some fantastic wall-offs that we've been seeing from Protoss players today. To be fair, this one can actually be blocked by a single unit. But uh, the natural wide open... 
and welcoming. As always, reminding me of that Seinfeld episode where they uh, meet that crazy guy who always leaves his front door open and is like, yeah, I like to welcome burglars into my house. It's, it, I just feel like if you don't wall off in Protoss vs. Zerg, you really are. It's like, you better have something waiting in there, some fucking trap. Like, you better be waiting behind the door with a screwdriver, a cardboard cutter, some sort of sharpened object. Because if you don't, honestly, you're going to have a bad time. It's like you live in, like, the real fucking hood, you know? We're talking about, like, a real, real shitty fucking slummy neighborhood, and you just leave your door open, and you stick a fucking post-it on the front saying, free drugs, come in here. Like, it's, it's just not a good idea. Zerg are basically, at their core, a bunch of fucking ravenous junkies just looking anywhere for the next fix. And they see the door open, they go, Oh, let's fucking go! Oh! And it turns out these probes, not, uh, Zerglings, not addicted to, uh, to, to traditional drugs. It seems like murdering probes is their drug of choice. Very Dexter-style Zerglings there. Do take out just one probe. Don't really get the fix they were looking for. So not bad defense by Bartleby. But uh, as long as that door stays wide open, I think we might see a few more of these attempts to go and get their fix. Uh, Guy Urchin over here on the right-hand side. That's right. Guy Urchin is just going to chill. Hey, Sario, what's up? Long time no see on the stream. Uh, apparently, thank you, Sario, for the, the uh, translation cute version of a vulture a tiny vulture i don't know if there can be a cute version of a vulture that's what we call an oxymoron in english that's two things that don't go together cute and vulture i is is that's like that's like adorable murderer like it's like a vulture is something that literally just like is like one of the ugliest creatures ever that hangs out eating the dead bodies of other animals like it is the opposite of cute like that is completely antithetical that makes zero sense i like it so we've got the cute vulture over here this red zerg player um and i guess in in in, in true vulture fashion is just gonna steal the minerals off the dead carcass of this map i don't know that's not a good metaphor i don't that doesn't make any sense amon's over here he's like i'm mind controlling pig to make shitty metaphors <laughs> I'm like fuck off amon stop it let me cast alone. By the way, holy shit, I never realized these things down here. That kind of looks like, it reminds me of an oracle. Does that remind ever anyone else of an oracle over there? Is that like an oracle frozen in time or something? There's one over here as well. Kind of, I don't know. That looks like an oracle to me. Hmm. Is that just me? Am I imagining things? Speaking of things that are imagined, these zealots were like, ah! Oh! Zealot shoes, zealot legs, the Nike upgrade is there. They've all got their running shoes, and that queen is welcomed to Dick Town. She goes, ah, instantly gets decapitated. The roaches are going to come over and try to find us. That's a lot of zealots, though, and those zealots get a beautiful semi surround. This cute vulture is looking a little bit more like a dead vulture right now. Those roaches getting massacred. Oh, God, Guy Urchin, you needed to get the hell out of there and pull back. You needed to wait for reinforcements. These zealots are going to have a party, and that's a whole bunch of kindergarten kids. They're going to run behind mum and dad. Mum and dad here are like, yeah, we'll stop them. The murderers, though, come in knives in hand and start shanking. They've been in prison for many years. They've refined their shanking technique. They grab the... Oh, God, the children are going to try and fight, but that's six murderous steroid-fueled shanky motherfuckers, and they are going to murder a lot of these children. Oh, Oh god, it's a bloodbath. Oh, that's disgusting. A casual 22 workers go down, and whilst the children do end up triumphant, I don't know if that's the way you want things to go, guys. I feel like you put a security guard at the door of the kindergarten, you don't make the kindergarten fight off the fucking murderers that have escaped from the penitentiary across the road. By the way, why did we set up a kindergarten across the road from a federal maximum security prison? That makes no sense. Also, why are they going in there and killing children? Who even wants to do that? It makes no sense. Finally, Guy Urchin does stabilize here, manages to hold on, gets a few more roaches out, and shit starts to come together. Uh, I love the base layout here, by the way. That's just a piece of art. For those of you who've watched my Protoss coaching sessions, you would know that I don't have OCD at all when it comes to building layout, and I think this here is basically optimum peak performance of a Protoss base. This to me, just it's easy to get around. There's nothing blocking you. You're using maximum utility of each pylon space. It, it definitely doesn't want to make me smash my head into a brick wall repeatedly until I can't comprehend reality anymore. 
It's definitely not the ugliest thing I've ever seen. And it doesn't make me want to fucking tear my hair out at all. It's fine. It looks beautiful. Just a nice fucking ha haphazard spread. This is like when you see fucking people underrating town planners, all right? You need town planning. People are like, nah, it'll be fine. We'll build 47 identical 27-story apartment blocks all next to each other. What we'll do is we'll then make sure every single apartment is perfectly identical, built really shittily, and then we'll fill them with only public housing to make sure you get a really good spread of society and you're definitely not forcing disadvantaged people en masse into the one living condition and basically forcefully creating your own fucking slummy, shitty place that's rife for drugs and crime. It just seems like a good way to plan things. Just fucking do it however. Let's not actually think about the larger social ramifications of building a shitty fucking layout to our neighborhoods. Let's just do it however. Good on you, Bartleby. Enjoy your fucking drug epidemic and your fucking slum neighborhoods filled with crime and murder and people selling drugs on every street corner because you fucked up. Sorry, guys. You might sense I have some issues. Uh, unresolved. It's okay. Um... There's, I, the housing developments in the, in the 1960s were a good idea. I think they worked out really well. I think they worked out really well, guys. Uh, <laughs> Random rants aside, though. Storm's on the way. Plus two's on the way. This game's not going too bad. Now, we were meant to see over 100 workers in this game, and I still don't know who the fuck's playing the challenge. I think it might be Bartleby. Bartleby's actually closer to the work account, and he's, like, taking bases like a mad Protoss right now. I would love to see 100 pro Protoss versus Zerg. Oh, four probes building at a time. It's Bartleby. Bartleby must be the one who sent this replay in. Bartleby must be the one who sent this replay in. Yes. Oh, I'm so happy right now. I, I'm managing to overcome my hatred of this base layout and all the trauma it's brought up. But, uh, you know, I think if we can see 100 pro Protoss versus Zerg, it's going to be all worth it. Oh, no. These zealots get isolated down here. Revenge of the Roaches. Roaches come forward and start to shut this down. They're doing an inner noise. Does anyone like the project, says McPatchy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people like projects. Project. Projects. Very well organized. Well developed, for sure. Storm's almost done. What have we got on the way in the tech? Hydrogen infestation pit. So what's the next step for the Zerg? Let's go to Guy Urchin's camera and try to put ourselves in the mind of the Zerg. Now, I'm going to take an estimate and say the Zerg just makes, like, roaches for the next 10 minutes and doesn't transition. Maybe adds a few hydras, but basically is like... I don't think we're going to see a hive tech. Like, you know when you can just, you can sense the Zerg's mindset is, I'm going to make a shitload of roaches, and when we fight, it's going to involve me attack moving a blob into your shit. And if you happen to have Psystorm, well, I guess we're having a bath. I don't think it's going to be much deeper than that. Guy Urchin's adding a lot of upgrades, which is nice. Tunneling claws, which is very cute. You do need Burrow to actually use that, though. Uh, getting bonus movement speed and regen while burrowed. Not the most helpful thing if you can't actually burrow. Um, yeah. Yep. That's like taking steroids if you're completely paralyzed. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, you're like, what? What's? That's not going to do anything. You can't work out. Um, that's a lot of zealots. That's 38 zealots, four immortals. Only one high templar. I think we need more high templar Bartleby. Bartleby's up to 87 workers and is maxed. I'm going to count this as corporate greed right here. These probes are just like, this is my existence, really? To just mine minerals? This is shit. This is terrible. Well, Bartleby says, mate, it's fine. It'll be all right. It's all good. Just, you know, just mine some minerals for your entire lifetime until your parts expire and we throw you out. By the way, uh, Immortals, Archons, and Zealots versus Roaches and Hydras. <laughs> Oh my god, a juicy storm in there as well. That was actually pretty decent for Guy Urchin. Things could have gone a lot worse, uh, to be honest, if that Protoss came in from two sides. But the Immortals and the Archons still a very scary threat. And these Hydras, unfortunately, have been skipping legs day. I don't know if you guys can notice, but they don't have muscular augments. That's right. The Hydralisks have the range upgrade. They've been doing their kettlebells. They've been doing their, their clean and snatches. They've been doing their fucking deadlifts. Their... They've, they haven't done a squat in seven years. They haven't done a lunge. They haven't done fucking anything else. They, they Cardio, what even is cardio? Thankfully, they get back towards the creep spread 
uh, with about six of them alive. But yeah, never skip leg day, guys. Uh, because you never know when a pack of Immortals and Archons are going to be chasing you down and savagely murdering you. Uh, that is definitely the reason. 93 workers for Bartleby, edging closer and closer to that beautiful 100 count. Now, there is 12 gateways and 4,800 minerals. Now, that is beautiful. I like it. The robos aren't even being used right now. Bartleby's like, nah, we're just going to build a few more gateways. And you can see, once again, making maximum use of these gateways. Did you guys know that each pylon can build like 12 gateways? At it is, oh, maybe not 12, it's like 9? Something like 9 gateways per pylon. But Bartleby here showing maximum efficiency is getting at most about 3 to 4 gateways per pylon. Just beautiful base layout, very project, it's 16 according to, apparently it's 16 gateways. But this base layout from Bartleby, I love it, it's beautiful, it's just really efficient, you know, it's like I desperately need to spend my money, I'm gonna put a gateway here, a gateway here, let's fucking just where else can I put a gateway? Where? Ah, oh, fucking, I'm out of space. Shit. Ah, oh, no. Ah, oh, let's let's try and. Ah, oh, man, my units are getting stuck. My archons are. Is this, is this guy? Can he even get out of there? I think he can get out of there. He's just hanging out in the corner, next to the crystal. Maybe it's warm. Do you reckon these crystals like vibrate? They let out a little bit of warm heat. My archons kind of sitting on it. He's like, ah, oh, just warming up me back. Maybe having a little bit of fun. Yeah, I can imagine that. 99 probes. And the last probe pops out. That's the 100th probe. All right. All right. Uh, his name is actually Marvin. So this probe comes out. He's like, all right, guys, I've been given artificial intelligence. I'm here. I'm ready to learn what tasks. Are we figuring out the meaning of life, the universe, everything? Are we going to solve quantum physics? Are we going to figure out time travel? The adjudicator's like, you're going to mine minerals. And he's like, okay, yeah, sure, sure. We can start off mining minerals. But, but what next? What after that? What do we do after we mine the minerals? Well, you're just going to mine more minerals. That's it. End of line. The probe's like, I've been given fucking high level intelligence, problem solving, the ability to figure out all sorts of mathematical equations. My job is to pick up the blue crystals and carry them back to the Nexus? Yes, Marvin. Yes, it is. Enjoy your shitty, shitty life, mate. Uh, once again, work is being exploited by the Protoss corporate overlords, mother truckers, corporate greed in full action. And now Bartleby about to use this gigantic economy, the slavery of those probes, those beautiful, beautiful life forms to fuel the military industrial complex. And this is the military industrial complex. Let's be real. This is modern warfare right now. Over here, we have fucking America. We got some aircraft carriers, AKA High Templar. We've got, shh, I know carriers are more like that, but in terms of raw power, it's the High Templar. The Immortals are your beautiful fucking uh, tanks and armor. Your Archons are your mechanized infantry. Yeah, your bloody, your bloody commandos and shit. The Roaches and Hydras over here, this is like, this is like the military of, of fucking, I don't know, Iraq or some shit when they first got invaded in the Gulf War. It's like, it's like, it just crumbles, you know? You're like, you've got dudes who are like, you want us to fight those guys over there. They just fucking run in the opposite direction. However, thankfully, in this case, Guy Urchin has basically just sold his soul to this fucker over here. Amon's like, just sell, sell your soul, man. Just, just give me your soul, and I will give you the ultimate bullshit tech in the game. I will give you the ability to use your own children as weapons. Guy Urchin's like, that sounds fucked up. I, I don't know if that's something that people should do. Uh, Amon's like, it's fine. You just take your baby and then you throw it at your opponent's face. And uh, then it can kill them. And then we're going to teach your baby how to nibble instantly on birth as well. It's going to nibble your opponents. Guy Urchin's like, well, we're fighting the fucking US military. It's the only chance. We're going to make a shitlord. Lord, a shitlord. <laughs> it's, it's not a shitload. A large group of broodlords is a shitlord of broodlords, um, for those of you who didn't know. So we've got a shitlord over here starting to group up. Uh, I like it when I misspeak and it turns into something. It's, it's always, yeah, it's always interesting. So a shitlord of broodlords. And let's be real, none of these fucking units really shoot up. We've got this one guy who's like, yeah, that's like one dude with a fucking handheld stinger trying to take down a fucking gigantic AC-130 fucking gunship or some shit. It's, I don't know, man. That thing's flying too high. You're not going to fucking do shit, all right? It's, it's, it's too high off the ground. You're not going to do anything. These broodlords, large and in charge. But uh, I do think maybe a little bit too much reliance on the broodlords and the jellyfish support. It's pure corrupt a broodlord. No hydras underneath. No queens. 
Uh, and we do have a casual 11,500 minerals and 2,000 gas to figure out this problem as Bartleby. So this is where we get to see how Bartleby's brain works. Now, this is the point, I think, where Bartleby can't fully fathom the idea of his army not being as good as that army, and he's just going to go for it. He's just going to fucking go for it. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Trying to go around a corner, up a ramp, into a gigantic army of broodlords with an almost pure anti-ground army. Bartleby showing high-level decision-making here. Says, yeah, well, okay, if a couple of good storms do get off, it looks like he might be able to kill a single broodlord. If that Archon can get... Nope, he's just going to fight the babies. And uh, the broodlords... Uh, the shitlord of broodlords do look on in horror as their children immediately from the womb they pop it out they grab it they throw it at their opponent and like the possessed fucking little girl out of uh the exorcist it's like it's he their heads are twisting around they're fucking crawling towards the enemy like that girl out of the ring scratching at them and shit and biting them it's it's terrible guys don't sell your soul to aim on it's it's not a good idea now there is a chance for bartleby or should i say uh, 27 chances to remax. The problem is the gas count's pretty low, and he still hasn't taken gases. So this is his last gas remax. He's trying to make blink, which is a solid minute and a half away. He's trying to make just archons and stalkers. Still has a shit ton of immortals, which I mean they can form the job of basically being Operation Immortal Shield and just walking forward and kind of not really doing. Oh God, Bartleby, you don't have blink yet. What are you doing? Oh, Guy Urchin here says, I'm not even going to micro backwards. What is stutter step? Let's not even do that. Oh my God, Guy Urchin figured it out. Stutter stepping over the impassable terrain. <laughs> the Archons, the Stalkers, the Immortals deciding to headbutt pre-blink. Now, you can notice the good micro from Bartleby. Bartleby has managed to kill a few of the uh, Ring Girl Exorcist babies. The Corruptors flying overhead, getting themselves killed. Impressive micro by Guy Urchin here. In a fight where he should be losing zero units is losing almost every single corruptor the micro from guy urchin really really oh he's definitely a student of florencio you can tell here impressive control from guy urchin finding a way there to lose about 17 corruptors in the middle of a fight meanwhile bartleby continuing to headbutt into the edge of the cliff against the superior ranged air opponents both players here trapped in a high level engagement Pure decision-making, finesse, and excellence here playing a part. Now, we've also got to bring your attention to the fact that these Exorcist girls don't even have a single melee upgrade. That's right. Plus zero broodlings only do four damage, and there's plus two armor for Protoss. So these broodlings are doing almost zero damage. It doesn't matter how many ring girls you have nibbling your opponent's toes if it turns out your ring girls were born without teeth. They're crawling backwards. Their limbs are creepy. They're kind of moist, their hair's a wet, ragged mass. But guess what? They don't have teeth, so it's kind of like getting a kiss from your grandma. Every time one of them tries to nibble at your toes, you're like, this is weird, it's uncomfortable, it's scary, it doesn't do a lot of damage. <laughs> Stork is actually coming with Blink from the north. They're focusing down a few of these prune laws. <laughs> Bartleby continuing <laughs> to take the worst fight of all time. It turns out Bartleby does not only not care about the well-being of these workers who have been forced into just mining their entire lives with zero fucking break, but also has decided that the military lives don't matter either. <laughs> we just saw about 200 supply of stalkers bleed into this, a few stalkers, archons and immortals at a time, and Bartleby finally realizes that's not a good engagement, sends the immortals across the map, and that's, <laughs> there's literally nothing other than these broodlords defending at home. Bartleby, only after wasting thousands and thousands of resources, realizes that this is not how things go. Now, Guy Urchin here doing the best thing to do with broodlords, splitting them up. Remember, guys, that is the best way to control your broodlords. Make sure you split them up. Two of them are going to go down in the south here, but a lot of stalkers falling as well. The immortals have taken out one hatchery. Revenge of the broodlings. Once again, no melee upgrades, really meaning they aren't getting the damage done. And at this point, uh, can corporate greed come back? More stalkers warping and still has not started mining from those gases. This gas finally starting to mine! Still hasn't started mining from those gases. Oh man, finally, Bartleby's realizing that does need a little bit of that gas mining if he wants to make keep making uh, these stalkers. Spines building up here. Immortals don't really care about spines, but unfortunately for Bartleby, they said, we don't have orders right now. The command post back at home is on fire. Your generals are getting burnt down by a bunch of demented children being thrown into battle. 
They're like, well, we don't have orders. We're just going to smoke some ganj over here. We found some natural herbs. The uh, Zerg were, were growing. We're just going to have a break. Great work, Ethic Immortals. Fantastic. You could be wiping out the entire support system for the Zerg right now. But let's just chill the fuck out. Once again, Bartleby choosing an incredible angle to attack right when the Broodlords are over impassable terrain. Bartleby blinks into the midst of the Broodlings to give them maximum surface area. And we see once again a perfect example of how to engage against Broodlords. The Broodlords still having not an ounce of self-respect for their own children. Throw them into battle. No fucks given. And a melee upgrade finally starting. Guy Urchin realizing... These aren't killing things as fast as I would like. Maybe I should add some stuff in to see how it goes, maybe? And these zealots going across the map here. Bartleby's like, I I, I, I think I need to counterattack? These immortals still just fucking chilling down there. Zealot's going to go and counterattack as well. There's a lot of corruptors up. And trying to swap into void rays in the back is Bartleby. Bartleby still not able to solve the unsolvable Rubik's Cube of just keep making zealots and a move across the map. But it seems like after being met with 16 defeats in a row, Bartleby's hand is forced not by active problem solving, but by having the same solution of headbutting with stalkers fail 16 times in a row. The solution is forced upon Bartleby. And it's, I'm not sure if it's problem solving. But it is kind of stumbling into the correct response, I believe. Uh, it seems like the Immortals and Zealots are going to start to take some damage out. Yes, there's some Spines there, but Spines really don't do shit against Zealots and Immortals. Not with these upgrades. We've got Void Rays starting to stack up in the main, but that's way too many Corruptors. Guy Urchin can take those Void Rays out with ease. The problem is, if these Gateways go down, things could get nasty. Zealots starting to take down the Spines. The Immortals and Zealots going in. The problem for Guy Urchin here is Guy Urchin may lose a base trade. He's already realizing that and building a hatch on the other side of the map. Good preparation. Guy Urchin knows it's all on this one air army that's already on the map. Now these Chad Rays, an alpha of Chad's is out, and just like an alpha in real life, they are deciding to kill the Broodlings rather than actually try to hide from the massive Corruptors. Luckily for them, the Corruptors are stupid and are just chilling for now. Oh, another alpha of Chad's does pop from those Stargates. They're still not going for the Broodlords or going to run away. So we're watching, uh, and the Corruptors realize they're there. They decide to not engage just yet, which uh, is an interesting decision. Meanwhile, the main base of Guy Urchin getting ravaged, and we are seeing more Zealots come in. These Spines should be able to hang on to that one. The Broodlords edging forward, the Corruptors not supporting them. I mean, these Chad Rays are going to have it forced upon them. Surely they're going to go for those Broodlords. Do they not choose Broodlords over Broodlings? They turn around, the Corruptors come in, and two Alphas of Chad Rays turn into two Alphas of Dead Rays. Uh, the Stargate's going to go down as well. All the production falling here for Bartleby. But Bartleby's got a big pack of Zealots and Immortals. And this Spine Crawlers are not going to be enough. Those Immortals just too strong. A ton of cannons down here. Mass cannons and batteries everywhere for Bartleby. But nothing. <laughs> no production. Two gateways? Three gateways? Once again, struggling to get in a position. This Queen, she's going to try and spread a random creep tumor. The Zealots say, no, get the fuck out of here. They take her out. This last base on the left, that's it. That's it. Once this base goes down, these these are the second last group of buildings over here. Once those two extractors go down, it's a matter of protecting this base. Guy Urchin is going to split the Broodlords. Three Broodlords going to go to the right. Is that enough to really slow down a big wave of Zealots if it comes? I don't think so. Guy Urchin, 4,000 minerals in the bank, should be hedging the bets by building hatcheries all over the map, hiding them, building spines, building anything. But instead is just going to start mining resources. No spawning pool on the way. The Broodlords continue their slow, inevitable A move across the map. There is still zero direct counter response to the Broodlords and Corruptors on the way for Bartleby. Bartleby's massing gateways, but doesn't even have a cyber core. Can only make zealots and has enough to make 170 of them. So I feel like if Bartleby just puts that together, maybe able to do this. Oh god, Guy Urchin's last buildings have been found. Bartleby's gonna go for it. The three Broodlords throwing their babies in, but even with plus one melee finished, that is a shit ton of Zealots. The Zealots, thankfully, move commanding. Bartleby, though, does give an attack move command, finally. The Immortals come in, and these last three buildings look like they're gonna go down. Guy Urchin, where's the drones? You've gotta build more buildings. That's the last extractor, and an absolutely stupendous fashion. <laughs> with dominance over the skies, four and a half thousand minerals in the bank, and many drones still alive, Guy Urchin does not prepare for the base race adequately. <laughs> and we see the end of that glorious shit show of a game. A wondrous lead for Bartleby, 
almost lost there in the midst of the chaos, but in the end, stay strong. And as always, just like in real life, corporate greed wins. I don't give a fuck about your environment. We just care about our stock price. And right now, proto stocks are through the roof. Doesn't matter how many stalkers and archons you throw away into those brutal. Doesn't matter how many probes get fucking murdered after spending their entire lifetime chained to that mineral line. It's fine. In the end, the corporate share price went up. The Protoss wins and possibly gets one of the most ridiculous games we've cast in a while put into Icy Farth. Thank you, mate, for that fucking shit show of a game. Appreciate that. Boop, <laughs>